button on the bottom. Of yeah, yeah, let me see it. Once I shared my screen, I was like, oh man. Okay, back to my original. There. All right. So welcome to technical difficulties. We are, I'm a social worker at heart, not a, I did not <laughs> go in IT, unfortunately. Um, all right. So as I said, I wanted to talk a little bit more about enhancing your supervision while you are um, in the field instructor role, since you have lots of experience, um, have done the learning plans and different forms and things like that. So hopefully this will be more helpful to you um, in, in going through that. Um, all right. So Quickly, I just want to talk about four four different times when um, we you can utilize supervision during your orientation. Some of you have done that already, and hopefully maybe you'll learn some things that you want to bring back moving forward. Um, developing the learning plan, which all of you should be starting in that process if you haven't already, starting soon during your regular weekly supervision. And then lastly, at evaluation time. Um, so during the orientation time, it's really, really important to provide clear expectations. And some of these things may seem like common sense to you, but as you've probably experienced with some students, some of the things that you think are common sense in a professional environment have not come out shown to be through different student experiences and everything like that. So clear expectations can be anything from like time, dress code, like some of those professionalism kind of things to also kind of like how to how to talk to you about concerns and how to bring up um bring up situations and like and how to do that as far as especially if you are in doing a, like a joint task supervisor are you the task supervisor or you are um the MSW providing additional supervision um to meet that requirement or anything like that having those conversations about what the roles um of you as the task supervisor or you as the supervisor if you have that joint role um doing this all in the beginning so things are really clear really does help in the long run and not make things confusing i get I get a lot of emails from students in the first month of field placement regarding um, confusion and regarding scheduling or what their expectations are or how they're supposed to do things. Or um, And so my first thing I say back to them is, have you talked to your supervisor about these? And so I feel like it's really helpful to right off the bat have those conversations, um, share your preferences for how you want them to bring feedback to you and um, ask them well, how they want feedback to be brought back to them. Because some of them, this is their first like more professional job that they're having, <laughs> like in a professional environment kind of situation. So they don't know how to do that. Um, obviously, some of the students who are like returning students, changing careers, they may have a little bit more experience in that. But talking about those kind of things up front, I think is really helpful. Um, discussing learning styles. Some students really like like to shadow and watch a lot, spend lots of time watching someone else do it. Some need to read a manual really is helpful. Others want to um, just jump and dive right in and be open to making mistakes and everything. So those are things to kind of have a conversation of what is permissible in, in the culture at your organization and kind of just going through a lot of those things is really helpful during this time. Um, at the time of developing the learning plan, um, I'm hoping I we I've told all the you know my students and I know my colleagues do this is sharing their syllabi for their classes is extremely helpful. One, some of you have been out of school for a while. It is great to see what the new things that are be they're being taught during their time in class. It's also helpful for planning for assignments, especially if you um have a program that you know focuses primarily on a couple different competencies and they may have an uh they may have a an assignment that is much different and much than their daily work. What kind of things can you do to plan for those? Um, and really just kind of developing ways to kind of connect what they're learning in class to what they're doing with you in the field placement. Um, talking to the student about skills they would like to learn this year. So um, some of the students are in your field placement and they have no idea what they wanna do after they get their MSW. And some students, like they have known since they were five years old that they wanna be a therapist or whatever it may be, or school social worker, whatever. Um, so just kind of talking about what are those skills or what they need in order to gain 
to get to those goals of what they want to do when they're done. Um, because part of your role is going to be kind of is mentoring them to be a professional social worker for the future. And some of you have been my students in the past, um, which is like, super exciting and everything like that. So I'm hoping that you'll remember how you felt as a student and kind of bring the bringing those things, the positive things and the things that you wish were done a little bit differently to your experience. Um, listening to the students' hopes for this year um, and just kind of building on those for, to provide new opportunities, um, especially in like when you are, when the student's going to be doing primarily the same thing throughout most of their time with you, kind of during that learning plan, like kind of talking about like, what are some other, like, could they sit in on a board meeting? Is that an option? Could they on a, um, could they do something with the clinical team if that's not their focus this year? Um, just different kind of opportunities, shadowing, things that you may not have thought of, um, just kind of sitting through and kind of talking about those kind of help develop that learning plan and, and make it more robust. During your weekly supervision, please bring up concerns right away. Because um, on occasion, um, there will be a surprise in the evaluation. Students are a little taken back by that they were not professional at a time, but nobody discussed it with them and things like that. So please make sure you're having those conversations up front and using it as an opportunity for growth. Um, shares examples of what the student is doing well. Um, and at things that you've seen, things that positive things you've heard from other colleagues of yours in the office that have told you about the student. Students need a lot of feedback. Um, provide the student time for them to bring questions and concerns to you and observations, things they've seen, the culture of the organization. You can learn so much about your organization from someone new coming in and like seeing things and like, wow, I didn't even like realize we were doing that. And kind of from a different perspective, but also that that's how they learn and kind of can grow in like seeing how different things are done and being able to ask questions about those things. Um, allowing time for critical thinking. Um, students are gonna have to have some opportunity to be able to come up with conclusions to how to do things, maybe not always providing the answer right away and kind of talking to them about that. Now that is a little bit more frightening for students in the beginning of the year. Um, I will say that, that is a common thing that comes to me. Um, like the field instructor just told me to figure it out. And you're like, and they were like, I have no idea what to do, what the next step is, what type of intervention to use, or whatever the case may be for the type of setting you're in and everything. So you do need to balance that, like allowing them time to critically think through situations and come up with things on their own with like what their capacity is at that given point in time. Um, utilize process recordings. I don't know if any of you had to do these when you were in um, your graduate school program, but I did. Um, they're not used as much any, at, nowadays, but some type of kind of evaluating, like writing down how they felt through an, an experience with a client and just kind of reflecting on it and sharing with you and kind of going through like what the thought process is, how you came up with the conclusion to say what you said to that client or um, what was your decision-making process and things like that that connects that critical thinking process. Um, then during the semester evaluation, please share strengths with the student, things that they do well um, and how they can build on those strengths, especially during that first semester evaluation. It is a great time to kind of evaluate where they're at skill level, where they're at professionally um, and how they can grow on that during the second semester, evaluating like what things could change, kind of asking like how, you know, I know it's hard sometimes to ask the question of how I am as a supervisor, but it's a good, that's a great time to do it. Like, like, is there things that I can do better to help support you in the second half of your learning experience? Um, providing constructive feedback. Students do need this and everything like this, but this goes back to that, like making sure you're doing this as time goes along during that weekly supervision and not just at the time of the evaluation, because um, a lot of times it's a little bit hard to have those conversations. And we're going to talk a little bit about harder conversations in a little bit, um, but just kind of talking talking to them about those, um, giving them that constructive feedback can be very helpful to help them grow as a professional and to grow in their skills. So ex some examples of some common situations that may arise. Um, 
that may be more concerning to you and everything like that. So we kind of kind of, I'm going to talk through a few of these and then to, based on how much time I'm, we're going to give a five minute warning based on how quickly they get through all the things they need to in the other room. I, I will definitely want to open it up to kind of hear some of the things, maybe some of the experiences you've had that you can help share with how it's gone well or not gone well. So I'm just going to start with a few and then we'll kind of hopefully have some time to open it up a little bit more. Um, so a student just starts displaying symptoms of mental health concerns like depression, anxiety. Grad school is hard on its own. It's to the best of person in the best place mentally, physically, and everything like that. Um, but also on top of that, we have a lot of students that are in their 20s, which is definitely the time from your from um that I'm sure you remember that a lot of mental health concerns may start um showing up and everything like that. And so some of those things may on in on top of the anxiety, we also have a lot of students who lose, like especially grandparents during this age is very common and everything like that. So there's could be grief, um, students who moved across the country and don't have a support system. So all these things on top of each other may are definitely not avoidant of the time that they're there, whether the 15 or 21 hours a week they're there with you and things like that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, students struggling with professionalism. As I said, some of these students are coming right from college um, and have never been in a professional um, environments and everything like that to know exactly what they're supposed to do and may need a little bit more hand holding and guidance in the beginning. Going back to that common sense, some of those things are not common sense if you've never been in a common type of environment where those are what's the norm. Um, concerns about boundaries, um, whether it's too much or too not giving enough or spending too much time or sharing too much information. And I mean, I, I, we could have a whole session on um, what what boundaries are and how much they differentiate from the culture of the, the, the experience that you're in currently or your past learned experiences from your family of origin. Um, student has a difficulty accepting feedback, addressing conflict. It could be that, you know, you're like, hey, you know, how you were um, encounter that encounter with that other coworker or that encounter with that client like could should have gone a little bit differently. Let's talk about that. And some are going to be very open to it because this is new to them and they're open. Others, it's going to be much more difficult. You're either not going to get feedback where they're going to shut down, quiet, cry. You know, you may get all the different things. Um, or we get angry and everything like that and want to kind of like shut down and everything like that. And we know that comes from lots of different life experiences and everything like that. So I know that kind of situation could potentially happen. Um, student is not developing skills at the level you would expect in grad school. Um, so remember that grad school students are coming at all different types of levels of experience in the work and in work experience where they went to school and things like that so some students are going to want to jump right in so as I've experienced with many organizations some of you are going to take things really slow like for instance you will have them sit and watch you interact with a the client then you'll watch them interact with a the client then they'll interact by themselves other places that you don't have the luxury for that slower thing, especially um, if things are a little bit faster paced, you may have more of like the approach of like throwing in and like hell, trying to get you to see how it goes and everything like that. And that may work for some students, but not work for other students. So that goes back to that original conversation we talked about um, when you're orientating and everything like that, kind of talk about the comfortability of like how quickly they want to do. Because for what's a lot of the emails I'll get in the next month will be, I'm not doing anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not learning things. My co my other students are going really quick and I'm things are going slow. And your process may be a lot of training up front. So things are going to go slower and everything like that, which is normal. And like I'll guide them through that conversation. Others are going to be like, holy cow, they left, they put me out there and I didn't have any lot of training and things like that. So just kind of having those conversations. And then as things progress and everything like that, if you're feeling, still feeling like that's developing skills a little bit slower than you'd like, um, those are things that we can talk about. So all these, obviously I can, um, I or the, your field liaison that is um, working with you can definitely be, um, help support you through these conversations, but I'm gonna give you a couple of guidelines for a couple of the things that may come up. Um, so, so for instance, if you have a student that is starting to um, demonstrate some 
mental health concerns and everything like that. What I'm saying now, before you're seeing that happen, so hopefully nobody's having that happen already, but it's possible it will happen soon now that they're in school for a few weeks. Um, I talk a little bit here about emphasizing in supervision upfront that you understand that grad school can be challenging mentally, emotionally, and physically. Remind them that they should be aware of their supports now. So if things do become challenging, you have things in place to help them through those challenges. Talk to them about self-care practicing. And I know self-care can mean a lot of different things. So some people just go and get your nails done. Some people it's, you know, taking a hot bath and everything like that. Minimally, we want them to make sure they're getting some sleep, they're eating healthy, that you know, getting a little bit walk in if they don't have time to do exercise and things like that. Time with friends and family and things like that. Um, so just kind of upfront being real about the realities of grad school and this time in their life is going to be stressful this year. And what are the things in place and everything that they have? So Moving forward, if a situation arises, um, obviously reflect back on that conversation you had now earlier in the year, like what, going back to those support systems you had in place, going back to that therapy that you were getting into, do you still have those in place, you know, and based on the level of need. So I, unfortunately, I have had an incident um, before where a student was psychiatrically hospitalized at a field placement. Um, that is a very unusual, not a common situation, everything like that, but obviously that's a more of a crisis situation. Um, but based on the like level of intensity of the mental health concerns and everything like that, talking to the student about reaching out for more help. And I'm going to share some of the resources that the, the, um, that campus has to offer and everything like that to make sure that um, you're aware of some of the things that campus has to offer, but obviously they can always reach out to me. And it just depends on the students. Some students are really open to talking about these concerns with me as their field liaison or one of whoever is assigned there as their field liaison. Other students obviously are more private about it and more afraid to talk about it. Similarly, they may be afraid to talk to you about it, of how you're going to look upon them or think of them differently and everything like that as they're going through this crisis and stuff. Um, but we do have a counseling center on on site, which offers like a 24 hour crisis line also um, is available to them. Um, you know, obviously, like if they need to be evaluated to be psychiatric hospitalized, like that is something please like contact the field liaison as soon as possible. If that is a situation that has, is arising. Otherwise, if it's just kind of you feel like they are not getting enough support or it's causing problems in like the professional environment and things like that, please get your field liaison involved sooner than later and everything like that. So we can offer extra support to the student and provide support to you and how to navigate and what makes most sense and everything. Um, another thing that obviously comes up is professionalism concerns, um, vary in many different ways. Now, as I said earlier, um, talking about setting it up for them to know what exactly their expectation is in the field placement, um, that they are aware of when they're supposed to be there, what the schedule is, the dress codes, all about confidentiality, what are appropriate things to share and not share, things like that. Those are like probably the most common things that come up in regards to professionalism concerns. Um, I would say um, if a situation does arise, obviously like bring it up in supervision right away and everything like that, not waiting till you, it's festering inside of you and then you're getting frustrated and it comes out in a way that you would not be most ideal for you or the student and everything, which is completely understandable. Um, help the students to troubleshoot in this situation. Like if they're coming in late, is there a way, is there a re option for them to change their schedule a little bit that might help that sometimes helps that does not help for all students but just a thought um does the student need some more training regarding confidentiality or um whatever the situation may be coming up and everything and then please as i said earlier please contact your um field liaison to develop a plan to address concerns and everything like that because we want to try to work through these and make it make the placement work for both you and the student we don't want you to be frustrated all year with the student and everything everything because of um, whatever the concern is regarding the professionalism and everything. Um, so we can come up with written plans. We can do kind of just um, walkthroughs. I can have, you know, I or whoever the field liaisons can have conversations with the student, reminding them of what they need to do professionally. Um, um, and also just kind of like supporting them if they need additional like kind of readings and things like that on professionalism for assignments and things like that. We have done that kind of thing too. Um, 
So those were two examples I gave. I wanted to quickly share this. I don't know. Um, I, we will share the PowerPoint if you want to screenshot this um, with your with your phone, if that's helpful and everything like that. Um, obviously, the Jane Adams website will will kind of link to a lot of different things and everything like that, show different things for you and supports for you as a um, field instructor. Um, we have a counseling center, we have a wellness center. So I, I kind of differentiate a little bit about what the differences between them. These are things if, if you need to, obviously, the students have access to get all this information, but if it's helpful, like, hey, we were given this in the field instructor thing, just want to make sure you have this phone number or this, um, the website and everything like that so that they know. Um, one thing we didn't talk about specifically was the disability resource center and everything like that, which is a place. So some of the students are coming with different, whether it's a vision, like something that we can all see as a disability, or if it's something that is not seen, whether it be a learning disability, ADHD, or some of the common ones and everything. Some of the students may be able, may get um, accommodations for different things. Some may be like on how much assignment time. Some accommodations will flow into field placement. That is not the case for a lot of students, but on occasion it will and everything like that. And and so if that is the case, um, the student, if they do decide to, they don't, we don't require them to utilize this resource, but if they do do decide to use that resource and everything like that, they can, um, you'll get, you'll be able to share what like the options are and everything like that. Because as far as if it is like a physical um, disability, there are tons and tons of things that the um, UIC can do to help support that student, whether it's things to like help with visual impair or hearing impairment um, or um, correct chairs and things like that for like needs, physical needs and things like that. But I just want to make sure you have that aware. So now in the time I kind of wanted to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I just kind of wanted to open it up to um, you. All of you have stayed, you're in this room because you have um, had experiences with students with Jane Adams before. If any of you are feel open and don't feel too vulnerable or willing to be a little bit vulnerable to be able to share an experience that you've had with a student um, that maybe was a little bit more challenging and maybe it went well or maybe it didn't go well um, or um, would like to open it up to all of you to share, that would be great. I can unmute you if you're not able to unmute yourself. If you, anybody wants to raise their hand. Wanda. You want to unmute? <laughs> okay, I had a client that had issues with boundaries. I mean, a student that had issues with boundaries. Sure. And we just had to work on 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 those because um, it's common that you know she want they, they you want you want to help your clients. You want to make sure they do well. Sometimes you you feel like if you can't do everything for them, that you're failing them. So I just had to reassure her that. She only can do, you know, her what she can do. She can't um, do everything, but give herself credit for what she is doing. Yeah. Um, for the clients, so, so we we worked through that, and and they were able to, um, you know, create some good boundaries after that. Oh, good. Yeah, that is not uncommon, especially you know for. Um new students to social work that, you know, they are like here to save the world and they, they are ready. They want it like, and, and so if there is a, if there's some bumps in the road, they would like diving right in and everything. And so sometimes just working with them to kind of like knowing like, okay, this is where your role is. And, you know, the student or the client has to make, you know, decisions for themselves and things like that. And where you're yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a great example. Um, anybody else have some, um, a great example or maybe one that didn't go well, and that's okay too, if you're open to sharing. <laughs> no. Oh, Latia. You got to unmute. Hi. Hi. Um, so I actually had a not so well example, um, where we, eventually had to let a student go from our placement. Um, so everything on the list, the professionalism, the boundaries, the trouble addressing conflict, we had all of those. Yeah. Um, and Kara, I think it was your student actually. I know um, you're talking about. Yes, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so we tried multiple uh, methods. I think ultimately, 
is sometimes students just aren't a good fit for our placement yeah, yeah. as well. And um, as a good supervisor, I think recognizing that, like we exhausted all efforts. It was essentially um, the student that we had didn't want to do anything that we had here. Like we're a walking center, so uh, they didn't think that they had to stay from nine to five. It was, well, all my other placements, I could leave whenever I was done with the work that I was doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it not in this space, uh, just because we have to be available as long as we're open. Um, so it's possible. And and we had other interns who were with us who like had full caseloads. And this particular intern had no person on their caseload. And mm-hmm. so that was something that we talked about because of their professionalism and their attendance. Like they were calling in every every day, essentially. Um, so we were trying to work with them and um I think we had to bring Pam Pam in on this as well and uh, ultimately decided to let them go. But I did see that they graduated. So I'm sure that you found a great placement (laughs) for them. But I think sometimes we just have to recognize that students don't fit within our placement and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a rarity, but it does, it does happen or anything like that. Like we, you know, we try to prevent that from happening and try to work. And a lot of times, you know, students, when they accept placements, um, you know, they thought it was going to be different than what it was or what they thought they wanted to do is different than what it actually is and everything like that. And some of that is a hard learning lesson, but it is. And I know it's, it's sometimes hard on the field instructor too, going through that experience because it makes, makes, um, it makes it hard to do the job. So, yeah. Um, I did see somebody was having a hard time. Jamie, you're having, you weren't able to mute. Um, had a student had mental health concerns and it was helpful to be very patient with them. I was, it's difficult to offer supports, but not have them follow through with them. Yes. Yes. I know that that is a hard part. That is, that's hard when you are, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting an alert. I think we're going back to the, back to the thing soon. So, <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that is hard when you, um, offer up ideas or different ways, um, or in this particular situation supports and everything like that, but they're, you know, not open to taking them or afraid to take them or not in a good place. I mean, then, you know, I know sometimes it's feeling a little bit like it's a client situation, like a client rather than a student. And we definitely don't want that, that situation arising and everything like that. It goes back to the boundaries and conversations and everything like that. But please, if those situations happen, I mean, as I said, get the get your field liaison involved sooner than later and everything like that. Cause sometimes I had some great situations where it started off bumpy and that, you know, we got involved and like kind of did some meetings and things like that. And the placement ended up turning out wonderfully for both the student and the field instructor and everything like that. So if, you know, even if you are in the first couple of weeks having like, you're like seeing some red flags and things like that, like concerns, like, you know, let's start like addressing it right away and everything so that we can, you know, make a good plan and help support both you and the student to get the best result and everything like that. But yes, as we've heard that it doesn't always go as we would like it to go and everything, but we want to make sure that um, you know and your available resources and times that you have and everything. So yeah, that's great. Um, It looks like we're not getting kicked out yet. So um, what, um, any other examples of things that have occurred that, that, think might be helpful to uh, for other field instructors um or good things that practices maybe you do up front that maybe have helped like wow you I this has really worked well I tried this and it has really helped to um make a better experience for the students um throughout the year and everything and this is Rafael Capos um, hi hi from a, a new building beyond violence and abuse um yeah, I, I think that it's important just to remember, like, um, each student is different and um, they, some come in with lacking conf- confidence, but then others sometimes have, um, you know, better self-confidence. It's almost like um, with our clients, how we sort of start where the client is, more client-centered. I kind of look at it as like, you know, being student-centered and like kind of getting a, a good feel for the student at, at at the very beginning as to like what the confidence level is, like what have they done like in their previous internship or at work and um, 
and just kind of take it from there. My last intern, um, self-confidence was a real issue, um, but um, she completely grew throughout the year and we, we, we worked on that and we actually hired her on as a temporary counselor um, after her internship because she's <laughs> doing um, so well. Yeah, so she's here with us. Um, and now we have a new student. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to say that just like, you know, being very individualized and kind of looking to see what the needs of the particular student is, especially when it comes to self-confidence. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Cause yeah, I know it's every year it's, it's going to be a different experience, especially if we've had different students and just kind of remembering that, like, if it didn't go well with certain things in the past, like trying not to like think like, Oh, it was like that last time, this time it's going to go the same way. Um, and then, you know, like the, some students are able to get thrown right into things or, and grow really quick and others, you know, need a little bit more handholding in the beginning and everything, but we're here to like help support you and just kind of help to grow the students. And, you know, as many, all of you have been students at some point in time in your life and everything, I've gotten to where you are. So hopefully you will also have, um, be able to remember that is for those students that you're working with and everything. So I think we are at a time we're going to go back to our thing. So if everyone can, if you leave room, you will go back to the main thing. It was great talking with all of you. Please reach out if you have any questions. Take care.